So the other day I asked a question in my Facebook community and the question had something like this. It's like, if you could snap your fingers and change one thing in your life, what would it be? And I was reading through the comments, lots of comments, and, and like the common thread through that was basically people not believing in themselves. And the thing is, is that when you look at celebrities and, and sports figures and gazillionaires and billionaires and all that, there's one common thing that they have, all of them have, it's self-doubt. And we're not alone. Matter of fact, William Shakespeare said this, our doubts are traitors and make us lose the good we oft might win by fearing to attempt. See, when we have self-doubt, we, we, we're thinking in our head, oh, I don't know if I can do this, I don't know if I can do it again, and then we even stop to attempt it. I mean, this is important. I mean, think about this. A four-year-old kid is asked, hey, could you jump over this bar here that's a foot off the ground? Well, they're not gonna know unless they attempt to do it, right? So they attempt to jump, let's say they don't make it, they might lower it a little bit and then they make over that one and they raise it up to a foot and they may, maybe they make that one. So you have to start it first, but it's like, how are you ever gonna know if you're able to have the ability to do anything if you're doubting yourself that you can even do it? You have to attempt it first. Matter of fact, uh, Vincent Van Gogh, I mean, one of the most famous painters in the entire world said this, if you hear a voice within you say you cannot paint, then by all means paint and that voice will be silenced. See, the death of fear is certain when you get into action. That's the main thing that you have to do. And that's one thing how I got over my self-doubt. You know, I went through elementary, junior high, high school and college playing sports. Every team I was a part of in football was a losing team. And so it's like, that really weighed on me. I thought it was, maybe is it my fault that we're all losing? I, I don't know. You know, obviously it's a team sport. It's not an individual thing. But then after all the, my kind of my sports life, I got into business and then failed for another eight years. And so I really had a complex in my head about, man, can I even do, what am I supposed to do when I grow up? And so it wasn't until I got over myself and, 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 and stop thinking about myself and me and start focusing on others and how can, I, how can I serve them. And I started realizing, man, I can help other people. Now there's more to this. In other episodes, I'm gonna get into the details of how to get over your self-doubt. But now it's totally turned around. I'm helping people win. I'm helping people make uh, money. Uh, I've got a championship. Even though I didn't get my bowl rings in college, I got my championship million dollar rings. I'm helping people. And it's just a byproduct of me helping a lot of people overcome their self-doubts and get, you know, kind of unlocking and giving them permission to go out and succeed. And another, I mean, one of the world's greatest basketball players of our time said this, I have self-doubt, I have insecurity, I have fear of failure. I have nights when I show up at the arena and I'm like, my back hurts, my feet hurt, my knees hurt, I don't have it. I just wanna chill. We all have self-doubt. You don't deny it, but you also don't capitulate it, you embrace it. See, we all have it. You have to learn how to kind of silence that, that self-doubting voice because it's always gonna be in there. I don't care if, you know, it, it, if you're a billionaire or you've done it several times, it's always gonna be there. And we learn, you have to learn how to live with it and embrace it and go with it. So here's what you can do next. Step one, take inventory of the areas of your life where self-doubt creeps in the most. This is important because when you start to take inventory about what's happening, you can start identifying maybe certain common areas. And then step two, think about something that recently happened and ask yourself, how could I have looked at this differently? I think it's important that what else are you giving meaning to, right? I mean, especially as an adult and you look back at something that happened to you when you were five years old, you're an adult now so you can look at it differently. At least I hope so, right? And so you can start, you know, what would it mean if I did, if I looked at it this way? You know, what kind of meanings do you, we're meaning making machines. And that's one thing that's really gonna help you by looking at, uh, taking inventory and looking at how, how this is happening. Step three, start thinking about where your doubt originated. You know, was it from family behaviors, events, people, situations, circumstances? Once again, start looking for that common thread. These are things, these are some homework that I'm giving you right now. It's like, why, Jefferson, why are you giving me homework? Well. If you wanna overcome things, if you wanna be better, if you wanna be great at something, and you wanna exude greatness, you have to do some work on yourself. It's an inside job. So stay tuned for the next video as we dig into the root causes of self-doubt. Just really rip those things out. I'm telling you, the next video is gonna build upon this one. And so here's what I want you to do. Like to really inspire all of us, I think that just comment below on something that you've overcome, some self-doubt that you've overcome in the last you know, week or month 
And I think that's really gonna unlock a lot of things for all of us here, because as we team together in this community, uh, we're all gonna go farther faster. So with that said, I hope this video has helped you arrive at your next intended destination, healthy, wealthy, and happy.